I am the switch to having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Paul's desire is to go home and be with the Lord. And many times that's been my desire. And believe it or not, I have had Christians, including pastors, rebuke me. And yet, my feelings to go home is the same feelings that Paul had. And Paul said, listen, if it's not for you that you can be helped by me, if God would be all finished with me in the work in the ministry, and I feel the same way. The moment that God is finished with me, I don't want to be any second longer on this earth. I want to go home. And I want to be with Christ. But if God's going to use me, God woke me up today for a reason. God still has need for me. Whether the rapture happens or the Lord tarries and I don't wake up, I'm going to be home, present with the Lord Jesus Christ. The glory. Now, as we also look over here, 2 Timothy chapter 4, we'll look at Paul again. And... <laughs> Look at this. For Demas has forsaken me. Only Luke is with me. I have fought the good fight. You know what Paul said about his Christian life in this farewell address, his letter? My Christian life was a fight. My Christian life, I would be much better if I were to go home and be with Jesus Christ and in this world. And to sum up the ministry and the life of Paul, Paul says, I have fought the good fight. And even now, as I'm closing off my letter, I'm preparing to die. Demas has left me. And only Luke, the medical doctor, is with me. I have a cloak. And some books. And some parchments. In the eyes of man, in the eyes of Christians, that would be a complete, absolute failure. That Paul doesn't have a church building with all the pews filled. And yet when Paul will go home and be with the Lord Jesus Christ and go before the judgment seat of Christ, gold, silver, and precious stones, <coughs> much and much. Listen, you lads are seeing church age people with you. We have need of nothing. We're doing so great and fine. Yeah, guess what? You're not going to do so well at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, what else about Paul? And the typical Christian. Paul says, All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Now, look at this one. Now, if you don't think Paul was suicidal, I think he was. And, and Acts 14, 19. And your typical Baptist preacher today would say, Stiley, you're crazy. And there came a certain Jew from Antioch in Iconia, which persuaded the people having stoned Paul. Now that hurt. And drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he arose. I believe this is where Paul says, in the body, I knew a man. I believe that Paul died and went to heaven, like John. 
in the book of Revelation. Paul is in heaven. His dead body is on the ground and the disciple of oh, Paul. I'm going to miss you, Paul. Paul's in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The disciples stood around him. Verse 20. He arose. He rose up. Resurrection. Paul became alive again. Paul died, went to heaven. I, I, I'm bit to be tixed to, to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But it's needful for me to be. Look what he did. He rose up, resurrection, and came into the city. Paul got up from the dead. And he walks back to the city where they stoned him. I'm like, come on, guys, do it again. Listen, in Acts 16, Paul is in jail because he upset the, the silver shrine makers of Diana. Watch this one. Many average lads are seeing Christians today. They don't suffer. The only suffering they got to do is they got to stand in line at the restaurant to get some food. They got to stand in line at, at the fellowship church line. Look at this. 2 Corinthians 11.24 of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thirty-nine times, five times, Paul was beaten with whips. As the Lord Jesus Christ was beaten. Thrice I was beaten with rods. He was beaten with leather straps, cat of nine tails. Then he was beaten with rods. Thrice, three times. You better believe that Paul wanted to go home. Once I was stoned. We read about that. Three times or thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I had been in the deep. In journeys often, Paul was always on the road. Paul had no settling place. In perils of water. Again, shipwrecks and, and all the troubles and problems. Had. In perils of robbers. On his journey, people tried to rob him. In perils of my own countrymen, where he came from, where he grew up. In perils of the heathen, the Jewish people and the heathen, the Gentiles. Perils in the, in the city. Jerusalem and in cities. There was a place where, where Paul had to have been led in a basket over the wall because they wanted him dead. In the perils of the wilderness, that's not a place to be. Terrible. In perils of the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness. Paul got weary. I've gotten weary, and I have been rebuked for my weariness. Painfulness. The guy had been stoned. The guy had been whipped. The guy had been beaten with rot. Now, that never happened to me. There's a time that Paul says, God, I, I got this infirmity. God, I got this infirmity. God, I got this infirmity. My grace is sufficient. And what about my infirmity? Keep it. Keep you humble. And watchings often, in hunger and thirst. There were times the apostle Paul had no food and he had no water. In fastings often, 
Fasting is different from hunger. Hunger is there is no food. Fasting is there's food. I'm not going to eat it. In cold and nakedness. Beside all these things are without, which come upon me daily. I care for all the churches. I want to go home when the Lord's finished with me. I'm not going to commit suicide. I have not suffered as much as Apostle Paul suffered. I have had suffering in my ministry. I have had suffering from pastor of churches, of the Baptist churches. As they want to keep their sins. And the congregation gets upset because Stolly preaches against the sins. Instead, go into the congregation and tell the congregation they are wrong. And come sit down in my living room and tell me, Stolly, you are wrong. Because we rather offend one person than offend the whole congregation. I've had church members, church people. People go to church. Not all people in the church are saved. So I'm going to say saved and lost people in the churches. I've had them upset. As Paul was got pastors and church attendees got upset with him. Of the Jew and Gentile. And of the same. Demas. Left Paul. Bye Paul. Judas sold Jesus Christ out. Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times. Paul says that all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen, you got a merry, great, wonderful Christian life. You're not living it right. I've had friends forsake me. I've had Christians forsake me. Oh, yeah, we're with you. We're with you all the way. Where are they today? I see their lives are, are living in sin. I see their lives are living in the world. I see their lives following a man behind a pulpit. I've had my own family. I try to rebuke my family for good. Oh, and, oh, who do you think you are? Okay. Go ahead. Listen, I, I'm honest. I believe I was saved 1987. I was married 1991. I got on fire thanks to Lisa. I believe during the time of my marriage of Lisa, I believe in my heart that I witnessed to every living family member of both my family and Lisa's family. And maybe one I missed. Maybe one we missed. And we've got family mad at us. When Lisa and I were married, and we stood our faith, and we did not want any intoxicating liquor. We wanted a clean reception. We wanted a clean marriage. We, 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 we got some checks for the reception. We went to go deposit those checks, and one of them checks was canceled. And it cost me money for that check being canceled. I grew up in a Polish Catholic family. And most of those Catholics got angry with me because I sent them a gospel track. I told them about Jesus. I witnessed to them. Goodbye-bye, uh, Stiley. And I've had that with churches. I have been involved with a battle with the police, both in Norwich, Connecticut, and Daytona Beach, Florida. I have often fights with the police. I have had the U.S. Marshals escort us properly, I'm going to say properly, off the property of the, of the courthouse in Norwich, Connecticut. I've had done fight with, with a high school in, in Norwich, Connecticut, 
NFA about our ground, our standing for the gospel. We are we are in the in the, in the battle right now, Daytona Beach, Florida, with with the farmers market, with the police department, the city, and and, and the farmers market personnel. We can listen to a DJ blaspheming God, blaspheming the word of God. But when we preach the word of God, we preach the gospel and we preach it rightfully. <clears throat> we are the ones to shut up. I had my, my myself, <clears throat> my daughter and my son, my wife had gone into the hospital with cancer. She did not want to do the, the uh, radiation therapy, but we talked her into it. We got her into it. We went to the to we went with her to the radiation. We we're in the radiation waiting room. We got down on our knees in the waiting room. We didn't disturb anybody. There was nobody there but the Hayward family. As my wife was in the radiation therapy, and a husband and his two children were kneeling on the floor, no one around. And we had security tap us on the shoulder and say, you can't do that here. We got a chapel. My son was told in the Groton uh, Walmart, he's not allowed to come back in this store anymore. And what was his shoplifting crime? No, it wasn't shoplifting. What was his crime? Passing out gospel tracts. What is my crime of church today? I teach that Valentine's, Easter, and Christmas is a pagan festival of sin. And I post things on my Facebook where a pastor told me, well, we, we got to change some of the things you write about on Facebook. Why? They're against sin, and they are for the exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ for Christians to gain rewards and to forsake the world and the devil. If I have to, I will name the names. You better believe I'm tired from battle. You better believe I am frustrated from battle. When you're supposed to have an army of Jesus Christ, and I go to the first aid station, and I go to I go to check in. The Holy Spirit says, "Are you wounded?" I say, "Yes, sir, I'm wounded." And the Holy Spirit takes me into the into the into the little room, the examination room. And the Holy Spirit takes my blood pressure. <coughs> Forgive me. And the Holy Spirit takes my temperature. And the Holy Spirit says, "Okay." So Sir, where are you wounded? I says, Holy Spirit, sir, I am wounded in the back. Holy Spirit, sir, Lord Jesus Christ, Dr. Jesus, I have been wounded by one of my own, one of your children, Father. I didn't get a wound in the front from the world and from the devil, though I got those wounds too. My body, like Paul, has been scarred in the front and in the back. And when you are scarred from the front in battle, that is the enemy shooting at you. The enemy would be the world and the devil. And when you get the million dollar butt wound, being shot in the butt, being stabbed in the back, that is from your own army. That is from the people on your side. I've got wounds all around. And in my battle, I've got professing Christians who are actually turned out to be spies and traitors. As Paul had his and Jesus had his. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. And the most stupidest thing I see, I see these pictures of these people walking around with a cross. And on the back of the cross, there's two little wheels. You, Ingram Ramus. 
There's no wheels of carrying your cross. It's dragging it in the ground. It is falling under the weight of the cross. And I'll tell you right now, and I'm not going to mention no names right now, but if you're watching this video, and you have become, whether you're saved or you're lost, and you have wounded me in battle. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying those who, who try to help me, those who try to encourage me, those who say, you know, you ought not to be doing that. I'm talking about the Christians who love their sins and love the world. And I get that million dollar wound or I get the wound in the front. I walk into the first aid station and I check in with the Holy Spirit. And I say, Holy Spirit, Dr. Jesus, I got this wound, Father. From somebody who professes to be one of your children. And I name that wound. I name that person. You better believe I to God. And there have been many times on Facebook I've been thinking about naming the names. The Christian life is not easy. And if you have an easy Christian life, you need to get on your knees and get right with God. There's nothing prosperity about being a Christian. When you wake up in the morning, you're living right, and you and and in hell the devils have to wake up. Now, I'm not saying the devil's interested with me as much as he was interested with Paul and Peter. But when I get up and I go about my day, there are times that there are a couple of devils from hell have got their eyes on me. And I've got pearls, not as bad as Paul has. But friend, I've got my own cross. I had I had a church. And Lisa and I were, were courting. We, we were going to get married. Engage. I had the pastor call Lisa and I into his office. And he said, Mr. Hayward, Mrs. Rissal, I'm not going to marry you. What was our sin? Were we committed fornication? Were we involved in <coughs> adultery? Were we in drunkenness? Though at that time I did drink some. Thank God giving it up. No, you know what our great sin was? That sin has carried over the years. Frank Spaulding, brother Frank Spaulding, the Open Door Baptist Church, told Lisa and told Stanley, "Don't jump to start naming names. I'm not going to marry you because you don't come to the fellowships." Whoa, chapter and verse, sir. When your church has been split. And I look at your church and I see the things that are going on with your church now. I see some of the charges that have been brought against you. And the great sin, you don't come to fellowships. That's the great sin of the Baptist churches. Fellowships, fellowships. I'm out in the streets preaching. I'm out witnessing. I'm out getting gospel tracts out. I had a church in Ledger, Connecticut. We went out with signs. We went out with gospel tracts. And I told the pastor, and the <coughs> <coughs> you know, the pastor didn't want to work with us. He didn't want to work with our family. He said, you know, you know what he come up? We're going to have our own ministry. And on the other side of the state, they had their ministry. 
And I contacted the Christian Law Association, and they said, go talk to the police department where you're going to be at and tell them your ideas. I said, oh, yes, sir. So I went to Norwich Police. Me and my son, Henry, you can ask him. We said, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is who we are. And this is this is everything we have planned right now to this day. We're, we're starting this out. We've never done it before, but this is our plans. And I had the Norwich police officer. I don't know. His name is written down somewhere. I had a Norwich police officer stand up at that desk, a man of authority. He had some kind of stripes on his arm. Stand up at that desk, look at me and my son, and point his finger and said, I don't care about the Constitution. If I am given the orders to arrest you, I will be pleased to arrest you and put you in jail. And took took the copy of the Constitution I had and the paperwork from the from the printed out <coughs> of the U.S. Supreme Court and pushed it off into my lap. Meanwhile, the church that I was in, who don't want to work with my family, had their ministry were put in handcuffs in Mystic, Connecticut, as they were told they were standing on private property, get off the private property and go somewhere else, but we're going to take a stand, and they were wrong. They were on private property. And I thank God of, of all my years of ministry. I've never been arrested. I've been threatened and I came close. I had one time where the lawyer said, it's up to you. And if you get arrested, give me a call. I'll defend you. And I said, well, you know attorney and the police officer there i said why don't i just work why don't i just walk away and I let the attorneys do what they need to do and i th i think in daytona beach florida i think there's, there's going to come in a time i think i'm going to have to be arrested and i think a lawsuit is going to have to teach the date city of daytona beach that they're in the wrong But the Christian life is a battle. Yes, I want to go home. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I'm wounded. So are many other Christians. Even Christians I got friends on Facebook are tired and wounded. Mostly from other Christians. Nothing gets me madder than a worldly Christian. Nothing gets me madder when you got a pastor of a church stand up for worldly Christians. A true, dedicated Christian, when he comes to the end of his life, is he will say, I have fought the good fight. A good, a, a, a worldly Christian, when he comes to the end of his life, won't say I fought the good fight. I rested. I had good times. We had great fellowship. We had just had a wonderful, great time. We had all kinds of masses of people, and we just had a glorious, great, wonderful. That's not what Paul says. That's not the testimony of Jesus Christ as he's on the cross, a bloody, pussy mess. It's not the words of Peter to, to, to something to the fact is, don't crucify me like that. Crucify me upside down. Where one of the disciples, the apostle, was, was strapped to two animals and their body was ripped in pieces. Beheaded. Friend, you're not in a fight. 
You don't have family members mad at you. You don't have your church mad at you. You don't have pastors mad at you. You don't have the world mad at you. You don't have the, the police mad at you. You don't have the store managers mad at you. You're not doing your job as a Christian. By the way, the same Daytona Beach police officers have also spoken about to the city attorney. That man is respectful. That man doesn't cause trouble. I had, I have been told the city attorneys, or no, not the city, I, the, the attorneys for the Daytona Police Department. I guess there's two different groups. I've had the attorneys of the Daytona Police Department thank my lawyer. I thank you that he didn't get arrested, that he walked away and got things worked out. Now, that kind of testimony will lead someone to Jesus Christ. Don't you get angry with me when I want to go home and I get weary and I get tired. and I get... No, no, you need to pray. And there are Christians out there who are praying. I had a Christian today uh, message me on Facebook. I, I've had a pastor say, we got to get rid of your things you're writing on Facebook. I had a Christian today write me on, on, uh, on Messenger and Facebook. Are you okay? You haven't been very vocal. You haven't been writing on Facebook. And I've been sick. I've been in the hospital. And what I'm going through in the hospital right now has been very, <coughs> been very tragic to my body. Now, I have not suffered as much as Paul suffered. <coughs> but I'm not. <coughs> Can I apologize? Part of the surgery I had. But I'm not the Apostle Paul. I'm Stanley Hayward. And I've got perils. I'm telling you right now, some of the perils ashamed is are people who have been named Jesus Christ as their Savior. Some of you have been my, by my perils. You know, a disciple is one that's that, all right, you don't want to serve Jesus. You don't want to get saved. See ya. Bye. And you say that to your mother, you say that to your father, you say that to your wife, you say that to your children, and you say that to yourself. That's a disciple of Jesus Christ. Go back and read it. There's no cozy, comfy comfort zone of being a Christian. And if you got that bubble as a Christian, you're not doing it right. We got Jesus Christ and Paul and Peter, and James as our examples. And friend, Peter, James, John, and Paul, and Jesus never celebrated birthdays. They never celebrated Christmas. They never celebrated anything pagan. And they never compromised with the world. And if you do, you are in the sin. And shut up about those who are doing right and want to do right. Because people like me go to Jesus and go to God the Father and say, and we name names. <laughs>